Hey guys, I'm here with my dog, Molly. Everybody was showing their dogs earlier, so I just coerced her to come over here and lay by me. Of course, she's going to lay down and you won't be able to see her. Let me move the camera so you can see her a little bit better. There we go. So you can see her collar at least. Anyway, I'm sitting here cozy. I've been busy all morning talking with you guys and then talking with other teachers. So I'm going to read to you. Oh, I left you guys kind of on a, oh, what do you call that? A cliffhanger yesterday. So um, actually it wasn't a cliffhanger, but we're going to, we're going to continue reading. So mom and Mrs. V, they're all getting ready to go to Washington, D.C., packing their bag. Mrs. V is helping. Um, we are on page three, or no, sorry. 254 is the page we're on. So um, <clears throat> I'll read the last paragraph that I read to you the last time. It says this. As mom closes and zips my suitcase, I feel tears come into my eyes. I can't believe this is happening. In just one day, I will be in Washington, D.C. on national television. I pray I won't screw up. I want to call Rose and see if she's nervous, too. I want to ask her what she'll wear to the White House. <gasps> Suppose we get to meet the First Lady. Now that would be the bomb. I want to know if she'll be sitting near, if we'll be sitting next to each other on the plane. I want to be like all the other girls. I don't sleep well that night. <clears throat> in the morning, Mom gets me bathed and dressed and fed in record time, while Dad gets Penny ready. Go see plane, she asks repeatedly. Fly, wee, Dad says as he flies her around the room in his arms. She loves it. We head outside and Mrs. V hurries over, camera in hand. She snaps pictures of me getting strapped in, my suitcase being loaded, and my brave and hopeful victory smile. Then she does it all over again with Dad's camcorder. No, we'll never be able to forget this morning. Penny darts about, chasing butterscotch, running in circles around the car, which has been washed and shined. Mom, dressed in a cool denim suit and surprisingly a pair of late-style Nikes, loads our bags in the car and we're totally ready to go by 8.45. Dad takes butterscotch back into the house and locks the front door on his way out. All set? He asks. Let's do it, Mom yells. Even Penny can feel the excitement. She claps her hands. I can't stop grinning. Even though I know we have plenty of time, I keep wanting Dad to drive faster. I'm so afraid that we'll miss the plane, or that we forgot my ticket, or that I'll throw up and we'll have to go back home. At the airport garage, we have no trouble finding a row of empty handicapped parking spaces. We unload me, my chairs, our bags, and Penny and Doodle. Mrs. V snaps more photos. Seems like hours, but in minutes, we're at the check-in gate. Mrs. V pushes me. Mom carries Penny. Dad pulls a cart loaded with luggage and doodle. It's 10 o'clock on the dot. Hi, Mom says cheerfully to the uniform lady at the desk. We're here to check in for the noon flight to Washington, D.C. She hands the, ladies our tic the lady our tickets. The noon flight? The woman replies with a frown. She types and clicks, purses her lips, then types some more. Finally, she looks up. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that flight has been canceled. We've had loads of cancellations today. A late winter snowstorm in the Northeast has caused backups all over. Canceled? My stomach starts to gurgle. Snow? Mom's voice sounds thick, but the weather here is sunny and clear. <clears throat> They've got five inches on the ground in Boston already, and more is predicted for this afternoon farther south. The F F FAA won't let planes take off in weather like that, so our whole system got gummed up. Planes due to arrive here and then return eastward get canceled, meaning our afternoon flights can't depart. Complicated. Sorry. <clears throat> the desk agent continues to type rapidly. She tells mom, I can get you and your daughter on the next direct flight out, however. 
It leaves here at 7.23 p.m. and will get you into Washington at 9.07. The Weather Service has predicted that the storm system will have fizzled by then, so we can start getting folks where they need to be. Actually, tomorrow it'll be all rain. <clears throat> My heart is thudding now. My heart is thudding now. Would you like me to rebook you now? She smiles cheerfully. She doesn't get it. But the competition starts at 7, Mom mumbles weakly. Excuse me? I didn't hear you, the desk agent says. I can't breathe. Mom speaks a little louder. Well, what about the rest of our group? We're traveling together, a group of school children, a quiz team, actually. They were also booked on this flight. We've got a competition this evening. Oh, yeah, I remember those kids. They were here early this morning. Great group. So polite and well-mannered. They told me all about the competition and the huge trophy they might be bringing home. They came early, Mom croaks. Well, it seems they all went to breakfast together, then came straight here. It's a good thing they did, too, or they wouldn't have gotten out. Where are they, Mom asks. Oh, they switched to the 9 o'clock flight, the, late, the last eastbound plane to get out before flights started getting canceled. They had to run down to the gate, but they made it just in time. I made sure of it. She looks down at her computer. Yes, that flight left about an hour ago. They're gone, Mom whispers. I feel like I'm going to choke. Are you and your family going to D.C. to cheer them on? The woman asks. Still, she doesn't get it. No, my daughter's on the team, Mom explains. We must get to Washington. Isn't there another flight? Perhaps on another airline? The woman looks at me and blinks. She's on the... She starts to ask, but then she catches herself, returns her gaze to her monitor, and begins typing furiously once more. I can hear her fingernails as they click on the keys. Dad places both hands on the ticket counter and leans in toward the agent. I have never seen him so angry. How could this happen? Shouldn't we have been notified that the flight was canceled? We try, sir, but it's not always possible, the lady replies, sounding truly sorry. We do, all, we do always advise passengers to call ahead and check their flight status. But this was the trip of a lifetime. You can't possibly understand how important this is to my daughter. I squeeze my eyes shut. Stupid elevator music floats from the tinny airport speakers. I hear no beautiful colors. I smell no lovely aromas. All I can see is the darkness behind my eyeballs. I'm really, really sorry, sir. Well, what about a connecting flight? We must get her to Washington this afternoon. The woman types and clicks for what seems like hours. Finally, she looks up. There are no other flights to D.C. on any other carrier, sir, nonstop or otherwise. That weather system has grounded everything. There will be nothing till later this evening. I'm so sorry, she whispers. I open my eyes because they're filling with tears. Dad walks away from the ticket counter, his face scrunched into tight wrinkles. Then, without warning, he smashes his fist in the, into the wall right next to where I'm sitting. I jerk my head up. I know that had to hurt. Ah! I shouldn't have done that! He admits, holding one fist in the other. But if I could have smashed my fist against the wall, I would have done as I would have done as well. Ha, would have as well. Mrs. V looks from Dad to me. I don't understand how this could could have happened either, she says to Mom. Shouldn't someone from the quiz team have called you? Her voice could crush bricks. The teacher, perhaps? Well, uh, maybe there wasn't time, Mom says helplessly. At least that's what I hope. <clears throat> surely they, surely they wouldn't have left her behind on purpose. I still had not taken one deep breath. I really do apologize, ma'am, the gate agent finally says. I've even checked airports in nearby cities. There are no flights 
out of the area until this evening. I have plenty of seats on our 7 o'clock flight if you'd like me to book you. No, thank you, Mom says quietly. It's too late. The entire airport feels like a vacuum to me. No sound, no voices, no air. Mom walks slowly toward me. I sit there in my new blue and white outfit with my new matching tennis shoes next to my new shiny red suitcase, feeling very, very stupid and angry. How could they do this to me? And helpless. I hate feeling like this. Like when I was little and got stuck on my back like a stupid turtle. There was nothing I could do. Nothing. How long does it take to drive to D.C.? Mrs. V asks. I don't even look up. I know the answer. Ten hours at the very least, Dad replies, his voice soft. Go fly airplane? Penny asks. No fly today, Dad says, touching her gently on her head with his good hand. Mom rolls me over to a bench on the other side of the check-in area. She kneels down in front of me. She's crying. I don't think I'll ever breathe again. Mom hugs me going to be okay, sweetie. You're still the best, the smartest, the most wonderful girl in the world. Somehow, we're going to get over this. No, I won't. Mrs. V wipes her eyes as well. She sits on the bench and takes both my hands in hers. Oh, baby girl, I know this is hard, but there's just no way to get you to Washington. I just sit there. The morning started out like crystal, but the day has turned to broken glass. And we're going to stop there. That's the end of chapter 28. It was a long one. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty devastated for Melody Oh, and her family. So this morning it was great seeing everyone. I'm going to send out a message um, this weekend, and we will plan on meeting again on Tuesday morning on our Zoom. I want you guys to continue working on um, Redbird. Um, I also want you to um, make sure you're reading every day, whether it's on Epic or whether it's through one of your own books. So make sure you're doing both every single day. Um, today I'm going to start, for those of you who have not finished your packets yet, today I'm going to create a video that goes through each of the pages to kind of help you through some of them. I know that some of them you've, you've been okay uh, with doing, but some of them are a little bit more difficult as you get towards the end. So I'm going to go ahead and create a video um, for that, and I will get that sent to your parents as well. So that should give you um, a little bit of help with that. So, all right, I hope you have, guys have a great weekend, and Molly and I say, see you later, and I love you guys very much. Bye.